And thank you for the ladies and the gentlemen uh, for providing all of the food, as you always do. Can you give them a big <laughs> Thank you. 
No more sorrow, no more 
Lord praise. Sunday school 
teachers will teach. That's what people need, amen, amen. is the Word. He preached the Word to them. Then they came to Him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. So we got one friend. I'm going to call him the one that's so paralyzed is being carried by four friends. And it says this, And when they could not come near Him, come near the house because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when, so when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. And Jesus saw their faith. He said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take your bed, and walk. But that you may know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Jesus healed that man, the paralyzed man, to prove to those that were right there that he had the authority and the power to forgive sins. If that the, sign, the proof is in the pudding, so to speak, and that's what Jesus said, to show you that I have the authority to forgive a man or woman of his sins, he said, get up off of that bed. The man got up and walked out. Verse, verse 11, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately. Not in a few moments, but immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all. I bet you when he walked out of that house, I bet it almost was like a pin drop when they saw that man. They were speechless when Jesus came and walked over Jesus. When this paralyzed man got up and rose, it says, in the he walked out in the presence of them all so that all were amazed, and then they glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like that. This. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, and we are grateful and thankful to be in your house. We're thankful to gather in your name, Jesus, and we humbly come before you, and we ask your anointing, your touch, and your blessing over this service. Thank you for the reading of your word. And Father, now as I stand in this place, please help me to bring forth this message. I pray that you'd open up the ears of the young people that are in this church, open up all of our hearts, oh God, that God, we may seek out good friends, but we also would be good friends to those that are in our lives, Lord. We ask this tonight in the name of Jesus, and everybody said, amen. amen and amen. You're familiar with the story. I preached on it uh, before Brother Wayne preached on it, I think a few weeks back on a Sunday night, but we see here that Jesus was preaching, and he was preaching the word. He, had, he was in a home in Capernaum, Capernaum, and he's there, and he's preaching the word, and the place is packed. And there the large crowds, it's probably a pretty good sized house that they were in. And there were so many people that were running out the door. People was hanging in the windows just trying to hear what Jesus was saying. And then comes some four friends. There comes four friends carrying a bed with a paralyzed man on it. And I can imagine as they get closer and they get closer to, and they see those people, they, they begin getting probably a little anxious in their spirit. Have you ever been going to a, uh, a, a concert or even I've seen when people go into maybe a church service or a funeral service and you can already see all the people out there and you're thinking, oh, where am I going to get to see that? You ever had that thought before? Where am I going to sit at? Or where am I going to do this? Where am I going to get to hear what's going on? Blah, blah. And so I may just ever get a little anxious as they're getting closer and they're carrying uh, their friend on this bed. And I imagine they were thinking, what are we going to do? We can't get him to Jesus. And you know, I was thinking about this. This came to my mind as I was reading this passage of Scripture today, this old saying. Have you ever heard it before? If there's a will, there's a way. You ever heard that old saying, if there's a will, there's a way? And I think that's what these fellas right here said. If there's a will, there's a way. Said, We've got the will to get him here. We'll do whatever it takes. Well, there's got to be a way. And I believe about that time they looked up and they saw the roof. They said, hmm, there's like an idea to me. You know what this shows to me and these, these friends here? They brought him there and the house was crowded. They couldn't get into the house carrying him. But they did not give up. It shows me their persistence. It shows me their persistence 
But they were persistent. Why? Because they cared about the, their friend that they were carrying. They cared about this man's life, and they wanted to see him healed, and they wanted to see his life change. They were persistent, and it shows us how they really cared about this man. I want you to remember this, young people. When you're looking for a friend, do you know one thing that you ought to find? The first thing you ought to look for, true friends care about other people. True friends care about other people. That should be one of the first qualities that you look for in a person. When I wrote that down today, and you better not judge me when I use this example, but when I, when I thought, see y'all, it's coming already. But I know that you teenagers in here and young people, have you ever seen the, the movie Mean Girls? Don't tell me I'm the only one in this church that has seen that movie. Raise your hand if you've seen that movie before. I got, I got some of you. They come out 10 years ago. It was, I didn't choose the movie, okay? It was a girlfriend that chose the movie. I just remember this part. I hear them talking about me. I'm going to the church. And in this part, these, these girls, I can't, there was a mean, there was a mean, there was three really mean girls in this. And then there was a fourth girl that came in and they were talking. And, and another one come up and she said, oh, I like your sweater. Where did you get that? She said, oh, my mom, it was my mom, mom's old sweater, blah, blah. And she said, oh, it's so cute. It's just so nice. And then that girl walks off and she turns back to the others and she said, that's the ugliest sweater I've ever seen. <laughs> She didn't really care. She was, she was a fake friend, amen. To her face, she was all nice and sweet. Oh, that's the nicest sweater all y'all ever seen. And then she turns around a minute later and says, that's the ugliest, stupidest thing I've ever seen. Can I tell you something? When you hang around with somebody long enough, you'll start seeing if they actually care about other people. And I want to encourage you, young people and children and teenagers and adults in here, look for somebody that cares about other people. I'm not talking about just cares about certain people, but behind the care for, for other people, amen, that doesn't look down on somebody else because they're different. Doesn't look down on somebody else because they're dressed funny or they're different than other people, but they actually have a care about them, other people. You know what? We live in a very selfish generation. And many times people are just concerned about self, 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 self. And, and friendships can be very shallow sometimes. People, people use one another in this generation. Did you know that? They'll just be friends with you long enough until they use all that they get, and then you won't see them no longer. I can imagine that the prodigal son that we read about that ran away when he left with his father's inheritance, and he said he goes to a faraway country, and he spent all of his inheritance, he spent all that money. I guarantee you while he had plenty of money, I bet you there were plenty of friends around. The text don't read that, but I guarantee you while money was flowing and he was partying and having a good time, there were plenty of friends around, but when out the money run out, guess what? The friends run out too. Choose, look for people that actually care about one another, amen? People can be very selfish, so be mindful about this, amen? Yes, think about this. I, I listen to I heard a country song before that came to my mind when I was writing this down. It, it's, it's, I think it's back in the 90s. It talks about you find out who your friends are. And it's a country song that talks about like if you, if you, if you run off in the ditch or, or you get stuck or you'll find out who your friends are when you're in trouble, when you need somebody. Amen? See, being a friend only in good times is not a friend at all. Being a friend... Only in the good times is not a friend at all. That's right. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 says this, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. A friend, you want to look for friends, young ladies and young boys, you ought to have a friend that will go with you through the thick end of things. Amen. Through the good and the bad. It should be one that ride or dies. They don't want to stick with you. With what you're going through. You want if somebody that's just there when the things are going good, but you can't depend on them, you can't trust them, that ain't no friend. Be careful who you choose to be your friends. Think about this. A real friend will be concerned about the spiritual, physical, and emotional well-being of others. A real friend will not be just they'll be cared about, they'll care about you. 
who you are. They'll be caring about you physically. They'll be care, they'll care about you spiritually, and they'll care about you, your emotional well-being. Look at these friends that we read about that are carrying this paralyzed man. They cared about him spiritually because he had sins that need to be forgiven. The first thing that Jesus said to him, your sins are forgiven. Amen. They cared about this man spiritually, but they all cared about him physically. They want to see him healed and doing better. A real friend, I'm going to tell you something, a real friend will want the best for you. And in the same way, you ought to be want the best for your friends. Yes. You know what? Be careful of those friends that get jealous of you all the time. <coughs> Come on. I'm preaching better than y'all letting on. It's a simple sermon, but I'm telling you. Be careful of those friends that are jealous of you all the time. A friend is somebody that won't see the best for you. Them poor fellows wanted to see the best for that man that was on that bed. That's right. We all want to see other people excel. We all want to see other people do better. We all want to see. Don't get jealous of that friend because she's got a better looking boyfriend than you. <laughs> Don't be jealous of that, that girl because she's got a better looking boyfriend than you or won't buy her the way they be, be good. Be glad for them. Good for you. Don't say it in a sarcastic way. Neither, amen. <laughs> be thankful for what... Hey, God, thank God bless them. Thank God that God's blessing. God give them this. Don't be jealous of them because they got them a car and you ain't got a car and you still walk. That's all right. Be, be thankful. Don't let that jealousy come in and, and to destroy your friendship. True friends will care about one another. So not only look for friends like that, but hey, be a friend like that. Yes. Don't be a, don't just look for friends like that. Be a friend like that. Number two, a good friend leads other people to Christ. Yes. A good friend will lead other people to Christ. You want somebody in your life, get somebody in your life that leads you to Christ. This is, you know what, as a part of our responsibility as a Christian, we should have a desire to lead other people to Christ. We should be a desire to be a light in the dark places. And you may say, well, why is that important to have people like that in my life? And what is more important than your eternal salvation? Amen. What is more important than your internal, your eternal salvation? And what is more important than your relationship with Christ? I want to encourage you young people, look for friends that will draw you to Christ and not away from Christ. Because they're both, I promise you. I've lived long enough, and I'm, I'm not that much older than you, but I am older than you. Live long enough to see the difference that people will either draw you to Christ or they'll pull you away from Christ. Amen. There is no in between. And you have to be very cautious of that. See, the fact of it is, people affect other people. People have an effect on other people. We have an effect on one another. You either have a positive effect on that person or a negative effect. Y'all agree with that? Amen. We will affect one another in some type of way. This is what Proverbs says in chapter 27, that iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another person. We have a positive effect. But do you know what I believe also? If I was going to write a Proverbs, all I could add in there, that so that can one person dull another person. Amen. We sharpen one another, but I have also found that you get the wrong people in your life that will dull you, so to speak. See, being around good friends, being around good friends will lead you to Christ. Help, it will help you to become a better Christian, too. I found that to be true in my life. Have you ever been around somebody that encouraged you in the Lord? Haven't you ever been somebody, around somebody that would encourage you in the Word of God and give you good biblical advice and, and, they, and they encourage you by their actions and by their attitude? Did it not encourage you to do better when you were around friends like that? Yes. Amen? Yes. Can I, it matters who you are around, but in the same way as you get around good godly friends that will encourage you in Christ, we also have got to understand that there can be friends that will lead us away from Christ. Yes. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says. And I like this translation, the, new, the, the NIV. It says this, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Amen. Don't be fooled. 
Don't think it won't happen to you. Bad company corrupts. I have seen this happen many times over the years. Where, where, say, a young lady would start dating the wrong boy. Seen this happen many times, and I had, I had, I remember this when I was even, when I was 20 years old and younger. And I remember this one particular girl saying, "I'm going to change it." <laughs> Listen to me, if you're a teenager in here right now, and you see some little boy that you like, and he's 17, and Mr. Bad Boy, and you think I'm going to change him, he'll be. You get a hold of him, you think you're going to change him. I remember this girl telling me, "I'm going to change him." And you know what happened? About two years later, she ended up pregnant with the child, and guess what? He was gone. The only person that can change that curl or that boy is Jesus Christ. It ain't Jesus. Christ. That's what I'm just going to tell you. Right here. You, ain't, you ain't Jesus, amen. You might think you've got something on it. You, you put some of them sugars on him, and he'll, he'll pay it down just a little while. Come on, but directly that lust is going to wear off and he's going to go hunting somewhere else. <coughs> Woo! I'm going to on the floor with y'all tonight, amen. Come on now. Be careful who you put yourself around, amen. Don't be misled. Don't be fooled, it says. Bad company corrupts good character. I've seen it time and time and time again with young people. You get around the wrong crowd. It is so easy to go down the wrong path. Amen. Choose your friends wisely. Yes. We need to be kind. We need to be friendly and, and compassionate to everybody. When I'm talking about friends, I'm talking about your inner circle, those you really listen to, those that you really will follow. Be careful who you let in. Amen. When you see people in your life that have ungodly characteristics, Limit your time around them. Limit your time around them when you choose your friends. Make sure you choose those that will lead you to Christ and not away from Christ. Listen to this. Don't make a temporary friend more important than your eternal soul. Amen. Amen. Don't make a temporary friend more important than your eternal soul. Let, let me give you some advice for life. There will be some people you will have to unfriend. Y'all writing all this down or not? Make sure you're getting all this. There will be y'all on Facebook, you got friends, when you get friends on there, and you can click on their little names and you can unfriend them and block them and get them off your page where you're friends. Don't be afraid to do that. It's okay. <coughs> well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Listen to me right now. I would rather you get away from them and go down the right path and you instead you'd be worried about offending them and you follow them down the wrong path of life. <coughs> don't worry about it. There, there comes points in life you've got to decide You've got to decide, okay, am I going to keep going down the wrong path with the wrong people, or am I going to cut that off, I'm going to wake up, and I've got to follow after my Savior, amen? amen. Don't be afraid of offending, oh, I don't want to hurt their feelings. They'll get over it, I promise you. Amen. It is okay, I promise you. As you go along in life, unfriend those people that take you down the wrong road in life. I want to say this too. All of our all of our youth group, most of it is down here. I want to say this to the youth group and to the young people. You remember this about church, and you remember this about coming to church and Sunday school and youth group. This is not a social club, but this is the house of God, and this is where we come to learn about our Lord and Savior, to hear the word taught, and we come to worship. Him. Not, I'm not trying to beat you up tonight. I'm just trying to, because I didn't get the chance to teach.
teach youth anymore. So I'm doing a youth service tonight. I want to remind this is the house of God. Yes, and so, young person, listen to me right now. You be very careful if you come with intentions of, uh, to start trouble. Be very careful if you come with intentions of, that are not of God, amen. Yes, because I promise you, God will take clean your plow with my mom. Yes, It'll come back. What you sow, you will reap. Don't you dare be leading other people in that youth group or those children astray. This is the house of God. Let me go on. Let me get all that so far. Let me go on to the third one. Amen. Secondly, good friends lead others to Christ. Yes, Lord. Make sure you look for friends. If you don't get in your inner circle, make sure you've got friends that will lead you and point you to Jesus. But also, you're that type of friend. Amen. That you're a friend. You're a light in a dark place. Number three, a good friend doesn't give up easily. They'll go the second mile. A good friend does not give up easily, they will go the second mile. Notice what these four friends in our text did uh, for their friends. When they couldn't, when they got to the house and there was no way in, the place was packed, they couldn't get him in the door. Well, they did not just say, well, well, Bob, we tried. That's what, too bad. We can't get in. We're going to have to go home. They didn't give up easily, did they? But they looked up and they said, well, there's some stairs. Let's get up there on the roof. We're going to make a way. If there's a wheel, there is a way. And they started tearing off the top of that roof. And they lowered him down through uh, that roof in order to get him to Jesus. They were determined that nothing was going to stop them from getting their friend to Jesus. You know what? Friends like that are really hard to come by. Amen. Friends like that don't come by very much in life. And you know what life can be like this story, very much like this story. There will come times in your life that you are desperate, desperately going to need the help of freedom. I believe that. There will come times in your life that you will desperately need the help of friends or they're going to help you. And I want to encourage you, when them times come, go the extra mile with that friend. Go the extra mile with that friend. With that person that you have been by your side and you've been by their side. Be someone that doesn't give up easily on those friends. Listen to Matthew chapter 5 verse 41. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Amen. Go with that extra mile. I think sometimes we give up on people too quick. We give up on people too quick. And I want to encourage you. That I'm not talking about people that are leading you astray. Don't, don't mix up what I just said. Remember I told you a minute ago, there's certain people you've got to unfriend. They're leading you in the wrong direction. Amen? Yeah. If you keep messing around with them, friends, they're going to take you down roads that, that's, that's, that's going to stick with you a lot longer than you want to. Right. But I'm talking about friends that go through hard times and go through problems and trouble. I want to encourage you to go an extra mile with them and be there to support them yes. and to help them through those times. That's what I'm talking about. Think about this. I've had over the years, I've got friends. I have, I've got about this many good friends. Probably I don't even forgot all that many. Amen. <laughs> got good friends. But I'll tell you something, young people. As time goes on, those friends that you've got now while you're in, in school, most of the time that number starts dwindling down as you get out of school, you get out of high school, and you go to college, and all of a sudden your friend group used to be here, and then it just does like Jesus and the people start just coming lower, lower, lower. But you don't need a lot of friends. You just need some really good friends. Amen. And know this, that sometimes in life, things will separate friends. Time separates friends. Distance, if they move away, separates friends. And, and even disagreements sometimes can come between friends. But you know what? <coughs> Do you know what? Even when you have disagreements, that doesn't mean you can't be friends anymore. Just because you have a disagreement over an issue doesn't mean, oh, well, I've just got to be done with that person because we can't see eye to eye. Do you know what? If you act that way to everybody in your life, you're not going to have anybody in your life, amen. Because you will never see eye to eye 100% with everybody. Sometimes we'll have disagreements, but don't let little disagreements destroy a friendship. Go ahead, second mile with that person. Number four, I'm almost done. Good friends, good friends don't count the cost. Well, what do you mean by this? 
Well, what I mean by this is they don't count the cost of friendship all the time. How many of you know that relationships cost you something? Relationships cost you something. What do you mean? They cost you time. They cost you money. They cost you energy. They cost you something. Amen. But real friends just want to be there for you. Notice these men didn't call the, count the cost of tearing the roof off of this house. You understand this wasn't their house. <coughs> that wasn't their house they were tearing the roof off of. If somebody come to my house and they started tearing the roof off of my house, I, I'm not going to be too friendly with them. Amen. You know what I'm going to say? You're going to pay for that. Is that not what we would say? If somebody come to our house and they started tearing the roof off of our house, the first thing, you're going to pay for that. You're going to fix it. So those friends, in order to get them to Jesus, to be a friend to this paralyzed man, they had, there had to be some costs there to them. They had to come back and fix that roof, I believe. They, or they paid for one of the two. There was some cost to our friendship. I want to say this to, to, to all everybody in here and the young people in here tonight. Relationships will cost you something. Friendships will cost you something. But I do want to give you this warning and I want to give you this disclaimer. There are those in life that will take from you as long as you give. I want to encourage you to seek balance, balanced relationships. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Where you give, but you also receive from that relationship. Where you give from that to that relationship. You give support. You give time. And, or, or even sometimes you, you give, a, a, give a gift. And guess what? You, you give a gift on your birthday, you get a gift back on your birthday. My, me and my friends, we just always said, don't do that. We're just swapping money. Amen. But there's a balance in relationships. How many of you know sometimes you can get an unhealthy, uh, balanced, real unbalanced relationship? There's that friend that always takes, 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 takes. Mm -hmm. I used to have a friend. I grew up with him through, through, through school and high school. And every time he would call, I'd say, what's he want now? That would be the first thing that I'd say. You may ever know something like that? Come on now. You know, so every time they call, when the name comes up on the screen of your phone, what is it now? Can I borrow your wheel? Can I borrow $20? Can I borrow your trailer? Can I borrow? Can you mow my grass and I'm going to pay you? I'm gonna, I'll pay you next month. Next month never came for this one friend. You know what I'm talking about? That one side, they're always wanting to, they'll keep taking as long as you keep getting. <laughs> Listen to me about friends like that. You remember I told you it's all right to unfriend them and it's all right to cut them. Just cut those kind of friends loose, amen. You can't give but so much. After a while, you know what I call those? I call them leeches. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing, the only thing they want to be friends with me with is the word of God or what they need. Amen. I ain't saying don't help one another. I'm not saying, you, but can I? There are some people that just keep take, 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 take. Amen. It's unbalanced. Look for balanced relationships in your life. People where you where you get something, where you've got support and they've got support. In those relationships. Think about that. And let me let me say this. I, I'm talking about leeches, but let me say this. Don't be a leech. Amen. <laughs> I talk about don't look, don't cut them people off. But you yourself, I hope ain't no leeches in here tonight. Amen. Think about it. Now, I hope you don't have that kind of relationship. Seek out palace relationships. Amen. Come on, let's close. We're gonna close this thing there. I done been up here rambling enough tonight, amen. I want to give you something. Y'all come on to the music. I want to give you some things to think about. I'm scared to go. Simple little points from the text, and I could have pulled out more tonight. But you remember this. As I'm closing and they're coming to the music, if you want a good friend, if you want a good friend, then be a good friend. If you want a good friend, then be a good friend. Be somebody that cares about other people. Be a friend that leads other people to Christ and doesn't corrupt character. Don't give up on your friends easily and be ready to go that extra mile and don't count the cost. You know what? If you say, Pastor, I, I, you want to know what a real true friend looks like? You want a real example of a friend? Listen to 
what Proverbs 18, 24 says I'm doing. A man who has a friend must be friendly himself. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. You know what? As I close this sermon tonight, you might be somebody and you say, I don't have any friends. I've never been one to have a lot of, a lot of close friends. I've always been too busy. But you know what? You may be in here, maybe you don't have that many friends. Some people are social butterflies. They got friends everywhere. And other, other brothers, we like to, you know, stay away. We get tired of people. Right? <laughs> but you know what? Some of you say, I don't really have a good friend. Let me tell you something. There's a friend that sits closer than a brother in Jesus Christ. You do have a friend. And he's there. He will always be there night or day. He's not going to leave you nor forsake you. You don't worry, have to worry about it being an unbalanced relation. He's going to be there to love on you, to support you, to encourage you, to hold you, to lift you up, amen, to strengthen you. If you ain't got a friend. Remember, you've always got a friend in Christ. I encourage you to close this sermon. Take these little nuggets that I just gave you tonight and think about them, young people. Choose your friends wisely. If you don't get nothing else out of my sermon, get that right there. Choose your friends wisely. Say it with me. Choose your friends wisely. And don't be afraid to unfriend some of you. Will you stand your feet all over the house? As we close this tonight, if you need to pray, if there's something going on in your life that you need prayer for, if there's something on your heart the Holy Spirit is dealing with you about, then I encourage you to come to the altar tonight as we sing, Brother Wayne. Go ahead, as we sing, y'all.